So hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about a fun game that we've all played as kids. So if I can go to the next slide, that'd be helpful. Last summer I had the opportunity to play hide and go seek in Revelstoke with yellow walkers. <laughs> if you haven't spotted the little guy already, he's sitting right there. So you're looking at a recently fledged yellow wobbler that's two weeks old. They're masters of the game as they can sit perfectly still for a long period of time. Let's try one more. I'll give you a hint. Sometimes I like to hide behind small leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting right over there. So as infuriating as you can probably imagine it was to try and find these guys, um, the data collected from this work was very interesting and shows very interesting results. But I'll back up a little bit. The yellow warbler is a small neotropical bird that uh, migrates across North America. They winter in Central America, Mexico, and parts of Northern South America, and winter and uh, breed as far north as Northern Canada. Here we can see one of the study sites I worked at, which is located 12 miles south of Revelstoke. The Revelstoke site is located within the drawdown zone of a, of a major hydroelectric dam, which makes for a very interesting field season. We went from hiking in May to waders in June, and finally a canoe in July. I was initially in Revelstoke to continue the data collection that was previously done to try and assess the impact of this hydro hydroelectric dam. So searching high and low for birds to band and nest to monitor, my supervisor and I started talking about other impacts that could be affecting the birds and how we could uh, measure them. So using data collected from from the years, uh, using data collected over the years from David Green and the CWE, I was able to assess weather effects and the potential impacts given to predicted climate change. The CWE has three yellow wolver sites that they collect uh, data at, up in Northern Territories, Inuvik, Revelstoke, and also down in Mexico. Using the data from Inuvik and Revelstoke, I was able to assess the current impacts of precipitation and temperature on yellow wolvers at these two sites. I used a mark recapture program, aptly named Program Mark, to run the analyses. Building hundreds of models uh, at the two sites, I was able to use AIC, or Echaix Information Criteria, to compete models. AIC uses the principle of parsimony to select models with fewer variables, unless those extra variables can significantly explain a lot more than a more basic model would. I also use RStudio to research annual and seasonal trends and to make some pretty graphs. So the climate variables tested were precipitation and temperature on both the day of an observation and the day before an observation. The top ASC models in Inuvik included minimum temperature from the day before, uh, which means that the minimum temperature of yesterday is a strong predictor of a nest survival for today. Revelstoke showed more exciting results, however, as uh, we can see an increased effect of precipitation on nest survival. Our top models included precipitation of both the day of and the day before an observation. So as you can see, on the day of, uh, it increased survival just a little bit. And the mechanism we proposed for that would be, it would be a muffling of sound of hungry nestlings, as well as reduced activity as the bird would be weathering the storm. But as you can see on the large negative slope from the day before, um, it's a very much, uh, the mechanism we proposed for that would be that if you are starving on the day before because you're trying to weather the storm, the next day you can have a lot more activity. And so you can see with large amounts of rain, just 20 millimeters, which is a pretty big storm, but happens every year, survival goes right down. So why do we care about this? Well, according to climate projections, we expect to see a marked increase in temperature in the Arctic, but along with that is a very big increase in precipitation. And so we can actually extrapolate the data that we have in uh, Revelstoke in the more temperate region up to Inuvik uh, for, for future times and try and assess what the, what the effect of increased precipitation is up there. Um, the same report also discusses that uh, in general, we're gonna have less frequent rain, but much more intense rain. So we will get that large effect. So should we start picketing parliament? try and tell them to stop climate change for this one reason? Well, we're not quite there on the data, but we can make some predictions. So we expect increased nest survival in Inuvik, mostly because of increased temperatures. But at the same time, 
greatly decreased mass survival from the impending rainstorms that are to come. And there's other data to suggest as well that the nest morphology and other adaptations that the northern populations have um, will negatively affect them a lot more in, in Indubek because of high, because of uh, high rainfall. Um, in Revelstoke, uh, we're not expecting a large amount of seasonal change in rainfall during the breeding season, but as said, it's not rainfall is going to be less frequent but a lot more intense. So we'll expect that to uh, lower survival as well. So one more thing here before I forget. Overall, we don't know the full extent of these impacts yet, but as climate models are refined and more data is collected at the study sites, and a more accurate prediction could be made. Um, but that will be for another honor student or graduate student. Thank you very much. <laughs>